So I guess we um, had another week off there with points. <laughs> oh man, I, I don't know what to say about this Belgian Grand Prix, but uh, let's just get into it. Welcome aboard, lights out, and welcome into another edition of F1 Starting Grid. I am Brock Young, there's Chaz Day. Before we go any further, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Form of Racing. And uh, email us if you have any topics, anything to discuss, the form of racing at gmail.com. So, Chaz, let's, let's talk about nothing, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Belgium Grand Prix was rained out, only two laps in. And uh, your general thoughts on that? Uh, I think it shows how important qualifying is. Right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, qualifying is, is super important. And obviously, uh, you know, getting to Q3 is, a, you know, it's always an important thing. But this race just uh, exemplified that. Well, let me read you something from Lewis Hamilton here. He uh, posted after the race, he said, today was a farce. The only people to lose out are the fans, and they have paid good money to watch the race. Of course, we can't do anything about the weather, but we have sophisticated equipment to tell us what's going on, and it was and it was clear the weather wasn't going to let up. We were sent out for one reason and one reason only. Two laps behind a safety car where there's no possible to gain or lose a, a place or provide entertainment to the fans isn't racing. We should have just caught it quits, not risked the drivers, the most importantly, refund the fans who were the heart of our sport. Your take on that? Um, I, I think that it's a very politically correct thing to say. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing to say. I, I, I don't know how true it is all together. So like, um, yeah, I mean, if, if he was saying, you know, we shouldn't have, like he literally said in his statement that they shouldn't have risked the uh, the drivers. Um, well, they also stopped the race altogether for the safety of the drivers. So it just feels like a statement that's uh, maybe trying to um, tr trying to solicit some uh, some goodwill from from fans, which you know he's. He's good. I mean, if, if Lewis Hamilton ever wanted to go into politics, I think he'd be amazing at it. He always knows what to uh, what to say, it seems. But I mean, that statement almost seems like a like a non statement at all. He's not really saying much, to, in my opinion. No, this is true. And many drivers uh, agreed with the cancellation and, um, and would like to see a refund. Many of them, not just Lewis, but many of them. Uh, yeah. In fact, Carlos came out, Carlos Sainz came out with an idea. It's like they should do spa twice next year to make up for this hmm. year. So it's an idea. I mean, yeah. they do get paid from, you know, fans being there. Now, now I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't be disappointed if, uh, if I showed up and I didn't get anything from it. I think they do, they can do something. Um, should it be a refund? Sure. I think that that's a, that's a way. Um, I'm sure there's other things that they could, they could do like maybe, um, you know, tickets for next year's race or something like that. I don't know if fans necessarily want their money back. What they want is to enjoy racing their, their fans, you know? So if I paid money, I, you know, it'd be cool to have my money back, but it's also like, dude, like I love racing. I, I, I want to, you know, so if it got translated into, you know, part of it goes into like a full, a full year of, uh, you know, F1 streaming, and obviously the cost isn't exactly the same, but um, there's creative ways to, to do it. But I think it's a little, um, th that, that's why that's why I said it kind of seems like a like he's kind of being the voice of the people by saying, you know, give us our money back, because it sounds like just like a fan perspective on things without acknowledging the business side of things. Um, right. So, you know, it's a simplistic approach. It, it I guess it could work. Well, let's go back to qualifying as you're talking about how, how important qualifying is. But before we get into uh, some shockers over there, we're talking about the shock of uh, qualifying three when there was just several drivers, including Veto and Norris, who got in a horrific accident. Mm -hmm. Say even before we hit, I mean, just go on their formation lap, not not at full speed, not at their uh, 
qualify qualification lap, but just in their formation, I'm going slow, and they said we should red flag this. Mm -hmm. But the FIA, um, in particular, Mansi did not do that. So your thoughts on that? Should they have red flagged it right at Q3, or they should have? Did they make the right decision? Did they make the right decision just calling it afterwards after the wreck? Yeah, I'm not familiar enough with uh, with. Um, I mean, obviously, I saw it happen, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a, a strong opinion on it. What, what do you think? Well, honestly, if every driver was calling for, or not every driver, but most drivers were calling for that, and and Vettel was very. Uh, explicit. I don't know if you saw qualifying or not, but after the wreck mm -hmm. happened, um, the people with Ashton Martin got on the radio. <clears throat> his people. No, I heard Bethel like checking on him and stuff, which is yeah, which is um, awesome. Though. Super cool. Yeah. But he, that's first words out of his mouth. It's like I told you, we should have red flagged this. Is he okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's that's something they should have listened to the drivers ahead of time because they, of all the people that know. Are the drivers right they're on the track they should have and if anything also it's like the safety car rise was right there i don't know if the safety car was reporting to the fia it's like this is not safe that's not going on or if they are reporting it's like yeah it's okay we should go ahead and go um even during the formation laps during the race itself on sunday uh the only one that said that we should have raced was uh max but every single person said i can't see there's so much spray coming up from the tires behind me or in front of me. Right. Like, I, I can't see. Right. I can't. right. So calling it off was, was appropriate there. And they said this, they, it only takes two laps to make the official race. So that's why they did the four, two formation laps and they called it quits on Sunday. Um, but I thought if they should have listened to the drivers ahead of time and that probably would have prevented Norris from going, hitting that puddle and going through, thank God he's okay. Mm -hmm. that. But he, that spin just really, you know, I'm like, wow. I mean, I another wow part uh, was going into Q, going into Q3 from Q2 was um, Russell getting into second position. I'm like, I was on my knees like, is this for real? <laughs> I mean, what's going on? Am I taking crazy pills? It George Russell, and not just George Russell, but also Latifi finishing in uh, the top ten, right? In qualifying, and you just said at the beginning of the show, that's how sh shows you how qualifying is uh, so important. But your take on uh, Williams? I wish Mike was here to talk about this, but yeah, I wish Mike was here too um, because Williams really did have uh, a really great showing this weekend. Unfortunately, you know, because of the conditions, it, it was. Um, you know, it'll be contested, I guess, as far as like how fans view their performance. But uh, the results are the results, right? Like everyone had the same conditions. Everyone was struggling. And so for them to uh, to pull out a result like this that, uh, to, to be frank, everyone would have hoped for, right? Like uh, Mercedes would have hoped for a second place finish because they finished third, right? So they, they, you know, anybody would have hoped for that sort of uh, result. But Williams was able to pull it off, and that's extraordinarily uh, impressive. And one thing that uh, Williams did do, which probably gave him somewhat of an advantage, is while everyone was actually on the uh, uh, total wet tires, uh, Williams went on the uh, – they're the only ones that went on the intermediate wet tires. Mm -hmm. So they were able to get a little more um, speed to them. So that's a little more speed, yeah. Better finish whether the way they finished but i once again as you said you can't take it away from them it is important to see where, where they finish and how they finished and it's just something to see is it nice to see them up there in points yeah. two races in a row so super super duper fun um good for them and um, it was really cool to to hear uh to just to hear the the name george russell on provisional poll i mean that's just it you know really 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 cool um so yeah good for them well speaking about george russell there he said that uh, if the race the, the actual race happened he would again he would who would have gotten past mm. he, he didn't even th think he would probably finish in the points well, i know he said he would definitely would not finish on the podium but he would definitely not he would definitely not finish on the podium but most likely not finish in points so 
but a win's a win. And a podium is it's, a podium. Uh, here's what's also funny, now that I think about it. Um, is this not the best result for Ricardo this season? He finished where he finished? Fourth? He finished in fourth. That could be it. Um, I think this might be the best result for him this this season. There is one race that he did finish uh, pretty high, like the fifth or sixth above Norris. But there was only one like that. But um, not too sure which race was that. But yeah, I think this is the highest one that they finished for uh, Ricardo. So I mean, let's get it up for uh, for Daniel Ricardo also, man. Like uh, he's yeah. he's been having a tough go of it. I'm a a uh, super big uh, Daniel Ricardo fan. Um, I think he's a he's a great driver, and I, I like him more as a person, to be honest. Um, but uh, he's he's really been struggling in McLaren, yeah. which is which is even more tough because McLaren hasn't been struggling uh, with with McLaren. You know, like McLaren's been doing so well. So it's nice to see um, Daniel Ricardo have a. Even under these circumstances, you know, like history is only going to remember the points. So it's nice to see yeah. him uh, come away with some some solid points. Well, absolutely. Um, so yeah, Latifi finished in ninth. Charles Leclerc and uh, Carlos Sainz with Ferrari finished eighth and tenth. So they finished in points. Uh, Ocon finished in seventh. Pierre Gassi in sixth. Vettel in fifth, and you make mention Ricardo in fourth, Hamilton in third, and Russell in second, and Max in first. But let's talk about this little story right here. A brand new award will be uh, happening at the end of the year on top of the Constructors and Drivers Championships. There's going to be a new Crypto.com award for overtaking, and uh, this is what F1.com. This was announced last week. We couldn't get to the story this last week, so we'll try to do it today here for you. F1.com says uh, today, or F1, F1 says today they announced a brand new crypto.com overtake award to award the individual, individual driver who makes the most overtakes throughout the season. The award, which is the first of its kind, is designed to celebrate the bravery exhibited by the drivers who make the bold moves in pursuit of success. Uh, and first and foremost, uh, we were talking off air, Chaz, that honestly, I thought it was Lewis Hamilton. The way he moves, and even could have been uh, Kimi Raikkonen, you know, the way he, how he starts, he overtakes quite a bit of people at the start. But it's actually so far right now is Sebastian Vettel is leading, um, and you made a good point about that. Yeah, no, it, it's. Uh, I think the the award is. Uh, I think it's interesting. Um, you know, doing something like this. I, I think I like that Formula One, and and we've we've mentioned this a few times on this show. I like that Formula One is constantly trying to improve and trying to make things more interesting. Um, so it looks like Mike might be might be uh, waiting just so you have that heads up. But okay. um, but I love that they're they're constantly trying new things. Uh, I think that you know the uh, the award here. What's up, Mikey? Welcome aboard. <laughs> howdy, howdy. Got say hi. Just want to have food in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing, then. Perfect timing. Um, How about T. Yeah. Williams? Oh man, yeah, we're we, we, talking about that. Yeah, we got it. We got to talk about it. We're gonna. Um, we'll come back to it in a second, so you can you can chime in because we'd love to to hear your take on things. All right, but uh, but you, uh, you, you, you thought there, Chaz? Yeah, but I, I think it's I think it's super super good and um, to uh, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think. You know, having something like this, there's this additional award is uh, is fun. Uh, it gets fans engaged. Uh, it doesn't. Now, does it actually mean anything? Like, will there be any uh, points attached to it? No, they just said it's just just a basic award that's going to happen at the end of the season. Oh, okay. Uh, to catch then up here, uh, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there's, if there's no points attached to it, then like the yeah. the drivers won't really care, but. No, but no, we're just talking about this, Mike, that uh, there's a new uh, Crypto.com Overtake Award going to be handed out at the end of the season. Basically, the person who has the most overtakes at the end of the season will be winning this award with the Drivers and Constructors Championship at the at the end there. And we were just talking about this off air, uh, Mike, that I thought it was going to be Lewis Hamilton in the lead so far, or even Kimi Raikkonen in the way he starts, but it's actually Sebastian Vettel who's leading 
this right now. So that's kind of surprising nice. to me when I read this article. But uh, quickly, your take on that. Well, first of all, I'm glad to see crypto.com displayed prominently all over the place as I am a holder <laughs> of cryptocurrency. And uh, that's my main platform. So go sign up. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Uh, yeah, it is surprising that it was Vettel because Vettel, you know, outside of the last couple of races, he's one of those guys that just kind of quietly does stuff in the background as as the focus and attention are on, you know, uh, the battle for the points lead, Hamilton, uh, the strop, and that, that all kind of takes a forefront. And he's just kind of quietly working behind the scenes, and, and he's gotten himself in a position a couple of times to – you know, I, I still think he should keep that podium in place. Personally, I don't think I don't think he should have lost that. I don't I don't think he gained yeah. an advantage, and I don't think it was an intentional thing to yeah. gain an advantage. And it did certainly didn't uh, give him enough advantage to to win that race, to make a difference, to win that race. So he should maintain that. But you know, he's a pro, he's, he used to be a world champion, so he knows the game. He knows how to race. He's a good race car driver, and he's just been quietly in the background, taking his opportunities when they come and and uh, getting in the points. Very quickly, I want to get your point on wins, but first, uh, you text me Sunday morning. It's like, is this for real? Yeah. Is this, and, you get, um, and Chaz, you can make the jokes back because he, he joked earlier in the season about his, uh, you know, DVR in the race and stuff like that. Well, he did not DVR qualifying, so he didn't get a chance to watch it. No, I did. I had to watch the, I watched, well, I, it, it didn't, it didn't record. And so I watched the highlights. Farce. Well, you know, cause I go Big through, fan. you know, I try to hit all the ones to record. And I guess that one, I just, I, I thought I did and I didn't. So I missed the qualifying. Fair, li you're literally a fair weather fan. You don't Shut watch up. any of the, anyway, the races in the rain. Any, <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, I'm not even going to entertain that. <laughs> so anyway, I, I watched the highlights that they put up on YouTube on the F1 channel, and that's when, you know, uh, Russell was P2, and that, I think it's fantastic. He handled the rain masterfully. He certainly proved he's a top-tier driver if you get a good car under him. Didn't let any of that bother him. Uh, mm -hmm. Kept his car on the track and, and ended up being a podium because he was P2. Now, had they gone all 55 laps, would he have been P2? No, in fact, uh, George Russell not. said that. <laughs> Probably but, not. But yeah. uh, like we said in the beginning of the season, uh, for, in order for the George Russells and other people to get onto the podium, Days like that have to happen where, mm -hmm. you know, Botas is out of control. Other drivers are, take themselves out because, they, they you know, they don't have the right setup on their car for the weather or just the weather in general. So I'm happy that well, William – I, I think for me his qualifying is more legitimate and should be uh, celebrated more than his – p2 podium because they really didn't race i mean three laps behind a pace car and a driving rainstorm that's not a race well i was gonna I mean, say too or i said it earlier before you got here mike that the only thing that's remembered by history is the uh, the points that were scored right and yeah. so coming up with a result that's second place where literally every other team that wasn't red bull would have wanted including mercedes mercedes would have taken a second place over a third oh, right so uh so coming out with that result is impressive no matter how he pulls it off and also and, and uh, it was all done and, and it was also, all done in qualifying it wasn't done with the race and george mm -hmm. russell did say i said this earlier too george russell did say if the race actually happened he would not have finished on the podium most likely in points mm -hmm. so uh yeah. but he said a podium is a podium at this point and that's so true can, we'll take it at this point i mean where they're at as a team take it <laughs> yeah uh speaking about points uh oh boy. over the week yeah sorry sorry Chaz. Yeah, boy. Um, both mike you and me we scored 32 and a half points and you broke the 300 mark you're at 326.5 i moved up to 297.5 and Chaz, I'm sorry, but you did stop. That was my there. points leader dance, Chaz. No, whatever. Uh, and 258 was your points. 258? So, 258. You stayed at 258. Oh my gosh. So, uh, Mike, I'm going to let you off 
so since you're the points leader, so I'm going to let you pick first this go around. What do you have in uh, the Netherlands this weekend? Uh, I just sat down, so let me bring up my screen here. <laughs> don't you uh, don't you <laughs> dare put a put a Williams on the podium, Michael? No, I won't. No, no, no. Understand. <laughs> He got that podium from the qualifying and the fact that he masterfully driven drove his car in, in a qualifying round. I am not under any delusion that Williams is back in any position to repeat that with a full race. You sure? I'm positive. Points, okay. maybe, with with some car wrecks. But that that is a gift from the F1 gods, and Williams should take it and be happy. We're stopping Hamilton Perez. Hmm. Your extra prediction there? Leclerc will finish in the top five. Oh, come on, Michael. That was mine. <laughs> I was literally, like, literally, I have it here. What? Sure? Really? Yeah. Yes. I just, that was just off the top of my head. Yeah, yes. All right. Well, Taz, you go ahead. Well, do you want me to pick something else? I'll pick something else. No, I'll pick. I'll. I'll, uh, I'll pick something else. Um, <clears throat> so for my top three, I have uh, Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas because uh, that's what you do when you're a Mercedes fan. <laughs> and uh, for my, what's that? Boring. Sorry. <laughs> Boring. Yep. Just, Sorry. just boring. I don't, I don't really back for that jazz. <laughs> seven, seven consecutive championships. Boring. All right. Um, Two fifty-eight. Boring. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think for my extra pick, I'll go. Let's in in honor of um, in honor of his uh, his crypto dot com uh, award here. Let's uh, let's do something with Fethel. Let's uh, let's just put him in the. Ooh, actually, you know what? Screw Vettel. I um, I want to put something on uh, Daniel Ricardo. I love that guy. Love Merce love McLaren. Uh, earlier, we we're talking about how impressive it was that Ricardo came in fourth, Mike. Um, and, you know, despite the circumstances, but whatever. So I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm just gonna put Ricardo in. Let's put him top. So I'm I'm thinking between seven and six. What how aggressive I want to go, but let's put him seven. Realistically, I think uh, he he can finish top seven, um, and it'll be a, a solid result for him. Okay. Speed that, that was a nice safe prediction. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, talking about boring, I'm going to stick with my picks from last week. I'm going with. Uh, Verstappen, Hamilton, I'm going with Norris. I think he has to make up from last week because, I mean, before the wreck, he was on on guard to be, be on pole. So, I mean, he's he's still up there. He's fighting like crazy. So, I, I went with Norris. And um, I'm going to steal yours, Chaz. You're going to say Vettel. I'm going, I'm going to go with Vettel top seven. That's my extra prediction. Yeah. All right. And, so, you got, you got Vettel top seven. I got Ricardo top seven. And to be so, honest, Vettel uh, – Max Verstappen, just to let y'all know, this is going to be in, the first time in the Netherlands for many, many years. Uh, Max is the only one that actually raced on that track. He raced it in uh, Formula 3, and he also practiced his Formula 1 car on there as well. So he has a um, little extra advantage, I would say. So Yeah, can I change my pick? No. Nope. I'll pick it. <laughs> no, okay. no Fairweather fan. You can't change your pick. <laughs> It has nothing to do with fandom. It's a prediction. I should have kept my mouth shut on that then. I should have said anything. It's a prediction. Well, what you got? What you got, Jazz? No, I think I think Max is going to destroy this track. You'll go with uh, Max. Yeah, he's going to pull. Be so far in front, no one's going to touch him. He's going to go. Pull yeah. Pull, pull yeah, I think I think I have to. I think if 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 you're if you're saying that I can make a change. Exactly. Then uh, right now, then yeah, I'm gonna change it to uh, to Max at number one. I'll put um, I'll put Hamilton at number two, but I think I want to switch up number three because Botas is uh, Botas is, has been struggling. Word on the streets is he won't even be here next year. Um, 
So let's let's go with a ooh. Okay. So this will this will actually be uh, be pretty interesting. Let let's go Leclaire. Hmm. That's a good one. If he could perform the way he did at Silverstone. Hey, yeah. Hold yeah. on, I've got Christian Horner on the phone here. Yeah. Hey, Christian. Hear him. You know. Yeah, I need to. Uh, I need to know how to go to the to the board there because I got a guy trying to trying to jump the bandwagon. Is that against any rules? Or <laughs> how should I file the yeah, complaint? You, yeah, I'll file the complaint. Thanks, Christian. He, yeah, if you're going to call anybody, you should not cross Christian Horner. The way that he this guy <laughs> adores Toto Wolf, like. <laughs> He's such a fanboy. If you've ever seen him like talk oh, about that's Toto, a, that's, a, that's a bromance right there. Oh my! No, I don't know if it's a bromance. It's just a crush because Toto, I don't think, has the same feelings for him. But uh, yeah, he's definitely a simp for Toto. And Mike, you go ahead and bring it to the stewards. I don't think they gave two craps about us. Well, you're the steward. <laughs> oh well, thank you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Moving on. Um, and Chaz, you pointed out this just a minute ago, and we'll talk about this whole scenario going on because this is a whole thing. This is actually the big news of the week so far. First and foremost, I'm going to throw this all at you, at you guys, and I will get your opinion on this. First and foremost, Kimi Raikkonen has announced he's going to retire at the end of the at, in this season. Legend. Uh, that it leaves up a seat at Alpha Romeo, but also former racers on Twitter has reported that uh, Nick DeVries is uh, reporting signed with Alpha Romeo in 2022, replacing Antonio Giovinazzi. So this is actually before uh, Kimi Raikkonen announcement. So we'll see about that. It also says that Alpha Romeo's investor is very close to Toto Wolf, so we could see a Botas DeVries lineup at Alpha Romeo, and also. Um, you, I want to go to you first, Chas, because you told me off air about uh, Botas leaving Mercedes. Yeah, so th there's been a lot of speculation about Botas leaving. It hasn't been confirmed uh, by Mercedes quite yet, but uh, I think the the Formula One world is kind of uh, speculating that Botas is leaving. Uh, Hamilton's commented on it kind of like in an interview. He just said, you know, hey, it's not my decision to make. You know, you know, I definitely enjoyed you know my time with uh, with Botas. He didn't confirm it, but he didn't deny it. He just kind of said, hey, you know, this it's kind of out of my control. It kind of seemed like something that you say when uh, when you're bidding someone farewell, you know, unofficially. Um, it all started from what I hear. Maybe not started, but but it, uh, you know, the the internet storm kind of started when uh, he was given a car from the Mercedes team. So he put it on his Instagram and uh, everyone just kind of started speculating that it was a farewell gift. So um, yeah, the, he doesn't have a contract. He hasn't con confirmed his, uh, his contract through last year. He's also openly said that he would love a contract. He's actually um, on the record uh, in an interview said that he would love to have his contract extended through 2022. So he has interest, but apparently Mercedes does not because he doesn't have a contract yet. So that's what, uh, that's what everyone's talking about. We've been talking to him for weeks on end about him possibly going to Williams, but we never thought about him going to Alfa Romeo. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think you going to Williams would be probably the worst case scenario for him. Uh, no offense, Mike. Um, unless, well, un unless he's going to get paid like a crap ton of money. I mean, and Mike kind of gets this more than, uh, more than I do. Cause he's a, he's a big overall sports guy, but sometimes you'll go to a smaller team in a smaller market because you get paid a crap ton of money. Um, you know, just kind of, it's kind of worth it. I don't know whether Williams is even has the, uh, the funds to, to pay him as much as he would need to get paid, especially with the salary cap coming next year. That is very true. Mike, and, well, we're, and, and we're going to, to miss our uh, sound bites of the week there with uh, Kimi Raikkonen. I was going to say, uh, just to close out that thought on Botas and Williams, 
Okay. Even though there may be a salary cap, Botas could bring more sponsorship to Williams just because he's Botas. So that could help them out and build a better car. So that might be part of their thought process too. Well, that's the, well, that's a, that's kind of the point. We we know why it would benefit Williams. We're we're just not sure how it would benefit Botas. Benefit Botas, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, he's driven for Williams before, so. And he may go to the route of Kimi Raikkonen and uh, Alonso that they just he just wants a race. He wants to be. He said he wants a contract. Well, he, he hasn't like fallen off out. that hard. I mean, uh, both of those guys were uh, with, towards the end of their career. I mean, Botas is still in his early thirties and coming off of uh, a solid season with the you know the best team in the sport. So he's not exactly falling off. No, uh, but well, my point is, like, whenever Kimmy went, Kimmy went from Ferrari to Alfa Romeo, then with Sauber, he, I guess, he took a pit cut. All he wants to do is drive, so he was happy to go back down instead of working for Ferrari. Right. Even though Alfa Romeo is, is a, a subsidiary of Ferrari in a sense, in from one world, but maybe both, as he, as you pointed out, Botas wants a contract, so he may take lesser money just to drive. Yeah, I think it, there's not a lot of available seats, which is tough uh, at mm-hmm. at the other you know big teams, and even worse than driving for Williams. Sorry again, Mike. Um, is to uh, to not drive for any Formula One team at all, because once you fall off of that that radar, then it's hard to get back into the sport. And if Williams in and I'll throw Alfa Romeo on this as well, if they could get Botas, they're going to grab him up because the mouth of um, wealth of information he has um he may not be number one material he might be championship material but he still has a wealth of knowledge of that car so bringing him in might do a well of good for either one williams or alfa Romeo. yeah i can see that mike your take on that <laughs> mike doesn't give a flying about photos <laughs> I mean, remind me what we were talking about just real quick. I was looking up information. Oh, it's uh, Botas possibly going either to Alfa Romeo or Williams. And oh, yeah. Like, well, like I said before, they, they, Botas used to drive for Williams and did well when he did. So, you know, that would be an easy fit and it would benefit Williams. I don't know about Alfa Romeo. I don't – I mean, right now they're down there – they're below Williams right there hanging out with Haas. So I don't know if that would benefit him. I don't know how much money you could pay somebody to drive a slow car. I mean, that that's, that, that's that slow. Right. Yeah. Like Brock said though, I mean, it, there, there aren't a ton of seats and like his only alternative would be to, you know, leave, leave the sport. I and mean, if he, he just loves driving, he doesn't have a ton of options for teams to go to. Yeah, and I guess I could see that too. He could look at it like, you know, wherever he goes, he's going to elevate the team that he goes to. He's going to make it better. He's going to make the standards better. The people are going to be more motivated to to do better as far as designing and, and maintaining a car. The sponsorships will, will follow. So, Or he might turn into Ricardo, who was supposed to go from a top-tier team down to a second-tier team and elevate it. And wound up uh, losing his career, <laughs> in in my yeah. opinion, um, no, he kind of fell off a cliff himself. He did. Well, well even the past to, weekend, <laughs> he went to Renault, and Renault is dysfunctional at best. I mean, it was a great decision at the time, but just no one talks about Ricardo anymore yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. In fact, I gotta come up with a new Twitter question of the week. Where would you like both toss to go? Would it be Alfa Romeo, Williams, or any other team if he leaves Mercedes? Yeah. So I'd like to I'd like to see him at Williams. I said before, you keep bringing a wealth of knowledge. He may not be championship material, but he brings a wealth of knowledge to that team and become Bring more competitive. Team. Yeah. Uh, but guys, yeah, I'll start with you, Mike. Your take on a. Uh, our beloved sound bites of the week guy, Timmy Raikkonen, retiring at the end of the year. Oh, I, you know, he's had a brilliant career. And uh, I'm certainly going to miss his, his 
quips and commentary and because he he's 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 a guy that's doing it purely for the fact that he likes to get in a car and drive fast so he has no f's to give and uh, it, it shows in his you know interviews they kind of stopped interviewing him because he just doesn't take anything serious so it's, he's that's i'm going to miss that aspect of it but what a brilliant career i mean 20 years in the seat that's that's nothing to shake at, especially in F1. I mean, that's a long career. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. You throw a couple and of world championships in there, and he's, he's, he's had a good career. And, Chaz, I would say I, I would love to see him on commentary. I, <laughs> I mean. Yes, come on. It, it would be. Uh, it, do either of you guys watch uh, a show called Ted Lasso? Mm-hmm. No, I've okay. heard of it. I've so. heard of it. Yeah. So it's a show that comes on uh, on Apple TV. Uh, it's gotten really popular. Uh, Jason Sudeikis. It's it's really brilliant show, but it's basically just about a uh, a college football coach who got called over to the uh, the England Premier League to fo- to coach a uh, a soccer team. Catches he knows nothing about soccer. So he's just a typical Midwest American guy, you know, talking about and learning soccer as the coach of a premier uh, ship team. And um, it's hilarious, but there's a character on there who is just, you know, he's, he's a legendary guy, you know, he's um, his name is Roy Kent and he's just like been playing for the team for a while. Everybody loves him. The fans love him, but he's legendary for just being, ownery like he's just always angry always upset so he retires and becomes a commentator and he's on there like as a commentator and he's just like he's just giving it to him straight he's just like like no he freaking sucks like that's the reason why he's the, that's the reason why he didn't score because he freaking sucks he's the worst amazing. and that would be I, Kimmy. i feel like yeah. roy kent would be kimmy raikkonen as a commentator absolutely that would be awesome Sky One needs to, to make that happen now. <laughs> I would love, I would love to see that. Um, <laughs> to close this part of the story out, though, there is a actually came out today on F1.com that says George Russell has strongly been linked with a move to Mercedes in 2022, and the current Williams driver has admitted he already knows where he's going to be racing next year, though he refused to say whether he'll be joining the Silver Arrows or stay put as current team. And this is a quote from Russell: "Yes, I will." I know where I'll be driving next year, unquote. So we'll see how that goes up. But, Mike, your take on that since. Uh, hey, I'm all for a Botas Russell Williams team. That would be awesome. Mm. Yeah, no, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> also, also, I mean, it would be, no, honestly, as far as a lineup goes. It would be a great freaking lineup, Mike. Like, I mean, come on. Botas and, and happen, Russell. But, you know. It'd be a great freaking lineup. The problem is you won't be able to keep both of those drivers. You're not going to get both of those drivers there in the same time. Like, it, it, you'd have to give up one. I think what, um, by virtue of the fact that he's not sharing where he'll be next year, we mm-hmm. know the answer. Because yeah, every understand. every single time, uh, a team and, and think about any sport, uh, you know, Mike, like think about any t- single time a, a player is staying with their current team. They always say it, mm-hmm. even if it's a lie, <laughs> they always say like, you know, I'm just, I'm going to be a, in Charlotte to the end of my career, or I'm going to be into like wherever the team is. They're like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to leave LA or whatever the heck. Right. Um, so the fact that he's not saying where, he, where he'll, he'll be next season oh, tells us exactly where he's going to go. Yeah, he's going to Mercedes. Yeah. yeah. I was just wishful thinking. <laughs> no, that would actually be a sick lineup though. I mean for yeah, for Williams. That been. I oh, mean, what, uh, there's not a better there's not a better one two punch that you could come up with than freaking Botas and, and Russell like as far as drivers that you're actually capable of getting. I mean, that'd be sick. Oh, that'd be great. Let's move on to our uh, finale topic here and that's the team that will make the biggest impact in the second half of the season uh thank you guys for voting on twitter on this but uh 50 of you guys has missed will be mclaren they'll make it the biggest impact 
followed by Ferrari at 40%, and Alpine and AlphaTauri uh, split the difference at the bottom at 5%. There's a quote right there also uh, on our Twitter page, and we'd love to get your comments on Twitter as well. He, um, he said, Ferrari, with their updated engine scheduled for Monza, should take the biggest move in the second half of the season. None of the other teams have any major updates planned unless Ricardo and Sonoda start contributing to their teams. Alpine is waiting for next year. So you guys, with all that taken in, uh, Mike, we'll start with you on that. <clears throat> yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's accurate. McLaren's making the improvements. They're always in the top 10, along with Ferrari. I mean, I, I, Ferrari's been a pleasant surprise only from a historical standpoint. They've always been, you know, they're supposed to be at the top. They're supposed to be at the top battling and out with Mercedes and Red Bull. So it's good to see them back. And and I think they're just going to continue to improve. I'm not sure too sure about Alpine, though. I think Alpine got lucky a couple of times. Same. And I think this, other than Gasly, I think it's the same for Alpha, uh, Alpha Tori as well. Um, I can't wait to see what Ferrari does in Monza, starting, starting in Monza with their updates. So we'll see from there. But uh, Chaz, your take on that uh, poll question. So... Um... Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, obviously, Ferrari kind of keep having that uh, that ace in the hole with um, that engine upgrade that they have access to. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to put them ahead of most of the teams. I, I don't really... It, it, it has seemed a couple of times throughout even this season so far where they they seem to have another gear where they can you know, perform as good as anybody in the field, right? Like we've seen them uh, just completely turn up, um, which is which is cool to see. So I think maybe that engine upgrade will be um, will be something worth watching. We can't wait for that. And uh, once again, another Twitter question of the week, where would you like Botas to go. If he leaves Mercedes, will it be Williams, will it be Alfa Romeo, will it be any other team? We'll follow through. Uh, put that on Twitter for you. After he leaves Mercedes, he can go to your local pet smart ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, tell us your real thoughts on both toss here. Chad, please. Dead like to me. <laughs> <laughs> what a what? great way. What a great way to end the show. Hey, blood in, blood out, right? For Mercedes? Blood in, blood out. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here this week. If you have any topics for us, theformerracing at gmail.com. Also leave a comment down below while you're here. Like and share, please. We, we also, we need you to subscribe to our channel, help us grow and check out our social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, at Former Racing. At, and it's right there down the bottom. You can go ahead and join. In the meantime, we'll see you next time here on the Former Racing.